Should getting to God be like climbing a ladder? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you coming and or coming to the program and listening. And uh, we've actually made a trip to Burley, Idaho, and we're going to be interviewing for the next several weeks some of the wonderful people up here in, in Burley, Idaho. And our first guest is Georgia Wageman. Wageman. Yes, Wageman. And Georgie Wageman. So I, I appreciate you coming and you. sharing your story. And I think the unique thing here is that you've been um, a Christian for a long time. Long time. <laughs> and I think a lot of the people that we've interviewed, especially recently, are people that are just coming out and finding out what I call the good news <laughs> of it the gospel. But you were born Mormon. Mm -hmm. And where was that at? And Salt Lake City. You were born in Salt Lake. Yes, I lived there for quite a while, went to school, and then moved to Layton, lived there for quite a while. Yeah. And then went to other places, California, Washington. After you were a little older, I older. guess. Mm -hmm. And how many brothers and sisters? I have two sisters. One has passed on, and then I, or I have three sisters. Oh. One's passed on. I have uh, one just younger than me, and then one that is quite a bit younger than me. Oh, and are they here in the area? Or? Uh, one is in Hagerman, and the other one's in uh, California. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> were your folks uh, members of the church, and you were? They were members, but they never went. They didn't, but and they had so, you go. Right. <laughs> Us kids went to primary and mutual. Yeah, okay. And we were in road shows, you know. Oh, I remember the old road yeah. shows and the one-act plays and yeah. all that stuff. And Did you ever was, go to the dances and the yeah, blue the and gold dances. banquets or something? Do you yeah. remember those? What was it? The blue and green ball or the blue? What yeah, was blue, it? And the some, blue and gold banquet, I think. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. <laughs> I'm, I remember those <laughs> old things, too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, that's neat. So um, just active in the church and just probably never any, that was about it. any questions about the church at that point in your life? At that point, no. I just uh, went and did what yeah. I was told. Yeah, so, just a good, followed what you knew. That's the only yeah, thing you knew. That was, was the only thing. Uh -huh. I did have um, a Catholic friend that I ran around with. And, and where was that at? That was in Salt Lake. That was in Salt Lake still. Okay. And uh, she did pray for me. <laughs> so, she did. So uh, I thought her church was a little different, but... Yeah. Did you go to church with her? I went to church once with her. Yeah? And you yeah. thought that was a little different, huh? They were very worshipful. A lot different than the Mormons were in their, yeah. in their church, but um, she was a neat girl. Yeah. And yeah. prayed for you. Yeah, I think... Yeah. I think that's important to, d yep. to do that. And look what happened, huh? Yeah. I wished I could remember her name. I'd yes. look her up and yeah. thank her. Thank her. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. So after high school, I guess, did you did you go to seminary? Did you take seminary no. at all? Okay. No. So after high school, what, what happened? It was just, uh, I was Mormon, that was it. Yeah. You know, okay. just uh, that was my background. Yeah. And uh, after in high school, we had moved away from Utah, and so, of course, we didn't go to church. And, oh, you didn't? Uh, no, not then. My sister's husband was in the service, and I was living with her. Oh. And uh, that was up in Washington. Oh, okay. So they didn't know anything about Mormons. And I couldn't believe that the people up there didn't know anything about <laughs> Mormons, because... You I just did. figured that was... Uh, everybody yeah, knew everything, yeah, huh? I thought... Mormons were it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of guess we have that yeah, feeling just like everybody think about just it. knows mm -hmm. everything. So, yeah. okay, and you, uh, what, so what happens after that? Well, I got married uh, to Duane, and uh, uh, later we had a child, and then uh, just started searching. And I never had read the Bible. And even though the Gideons gave me a Gideon Bible in grade school. Really? But uh, I had that they one. They passed I still them did. out? Or? Yeah, they did. Really? They okay. gave them to the kids. And uh, that was my first Bible, was from the Gideons. Wow. And uh, so later on, I just started searching a little bit. And I think if 
a Jehovah's Witness came to the house, and, and that sounded good to me, too. I was just searching, and just, I didn't know what I was searching so for. You didn't? Mm -mm. Did you, what did you think of Jesus at this point? Do you, do you remember? I knew that he died on the cross, and I knew Christmas, that he was born. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, basically, I didn't know that he died for my sins. Yeah. But uh, it just wasn't... Did you think of him as your elder brother? No. Uh, you didn't? No. Did you think of him as your savior, I guess? And... Um, I thought more about God. Oh. And God had a big stick. <laughs> and that's the God that I knew, one that would correct me. <laughs> and that's what we were talking about at the very beginning of climbing the ladder. And did right. you sense that in Mormonism that you had I to, did. to working, work? Working, and, working, working. Yeah. And always falling. Yeah, never, yeah, never measuring up quite. That's that's what made me think of a ladder. Yeah, climbing up and then a rung would break <laughs> and start all over again. And you know, so that was basically as a Mormon, that's the way I felt. Wow. So I never. Yeah, could I think make a lot it. of people feel that way and then feel guilt because of it. Right. Yeah. Because you're not good enough to. Yeah. And with Mormonism, you have to be in the loop. Of Mormonism, and if you're not, yeah, you're, yeah, you're not quite you, there. And did you sense that you were there or not there? No, or? Not there. Okay. So, I we called them, they called them Jack Mormons, and I guess that's where my family was at. Well, when you went to these different places, locations, did the bishops ever, or home visiting teachers, or anybody ever search you out and try to talk to you? Yeah, the missionaries would come. Yeah, and. Uh, Try to get you reactivated, or not after we were married. Oh no, they didn't come around until later on, and uh, that was when I had two kids, and that was in uh, uh, down in Buena Park, in Huntington Park. Okay, and uh, I just couldn't. I just by then we had accepted the Lord, in 1962. Well, Okay. And that's when I started reading the Bible. What prompted you to, when you say accept the Lord, I mean, certainly the Mormons would think that you, they threw, the, put the Lord in front of you, oh. <laughs> didn't they? But so yeah. what happened? Well, we had a little church uh, that was down on the corner, a little Southern Baptist. And uh, we decided we needed to go to church. and. Uh, Probably if it was another one, we would have went there too. Thank God it was one that was grounded and went a good church. And you took the kids too? We took the kids yeah. and we all went and uh, listened to, uh, his name was Dr. Music and he really? preached and... and uh, Is that with a C or a K? Um, music. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, okay. It <laughs> doesn't really matter, but... Okay. But I think it was with a C. Yeah. But uh, anyway, that's when we first heard the gospel. It's when I first heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he had died for me. And you'd never heard never. that before. I couldn't hardly believe it. And uh, I was filled with so many questions. Comparing the two, right. comparing what you'd learned in Mormonism right. and what you... Are we going to be married in heaven? Are we, you know, all these different things. Right. And what is the Trinity? And that one really, <laughs> I had to search that out like crazy. Yeah, I, I don't know I what you mean. It takes a while. I found all kinds of yeah. verses yeah. saying that Jesus is God. So Yeah, it's so different than what we're taught was. in Mormonism. There's a lot of... And a lot of uh, brainwashing, I think, from the Mormon Church, where um, I had to reprogram myself yeah. to think different. Kind of take the scales off. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and this whole concept of Jesus and the atonement and what he did for us, I never understood that it was his righteousness that makes me righteous and, and have a standing before God. Right. I did think I, I had to work my way. And then Jesus just helped at the end. Right. Yeah. Is that what you thought too? And I, I did. Yeah. And it was such a relief to see in uh, these verses. In, I started reading John. And the first chapter of John just told me who God was yeah. and who Jesus was. You had some scriptures that you wanted to read. Is that yeah, one but, of them uh, that you wanted to share? Well, it was uh, 
in John, the first chapter, and I would advise anybody that is coming out of Mormonism to read John, Romans, so special, and Galatians. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll see Mormonism where it is and where God stands and where Jesus stands with you. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is. It's, and, it's, and really what struck me was what Jesus and Paul talked about and what they didn't talk about. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about marriage and time for all, time and all eternity and right. all those things, you know. It, it's, you know. Yeah. So go ahead and share that. So I was just uh, uh, in the first <clears throat> chapter and verse burn. One, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and with the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And then on down, it says that He, Jesus, He was the light. It says, um, it was talk, talks about John the Baptist, and then it goes, um, this man came to witness of the light, who Which was Jesus. Jesus, of course, and, yeah. And it says, uh, that all through him might believe he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. And the whole chapter uh, of the first chapter tells that Jesus, yeah. and then it says the word became flesh and dwelled among us and we beheld the glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And that's Jesus Christ. It is. Um, so not our elder brother, he's not a created being, Right. He's the creator. He is. And so yeah, that, that, that's, and that really struck you. Or you oh, started it did. hearing that it message. Did, especially and, when I'm searching out. Um, <laughs> this is from the beginning of searching verses for the Trinity. It's oh. an old paper, but I, every time I find <laughs> Trying to learn about who this God is right. and, and who and, Jesus is. Right. And, well, good for you, studying a little bit. I think that's one of the most dangerous things a Mormon can do is to start studying. Yeah, well. <laughs> especially the Bible, but uh, to right. start learning if exactly. They, if they would only read the Bible and put the Book of Mormon aside and the Pearl of Great Price and the Doctrine and Covenants yeah. and read what, what God has to say to them because yeah. God loves them so much. And he oh, wants them saved. That's why he came. Well, gosh. So um, now you mentioned you, that you had a born again experience, mm -hmm. and could you you want to share that with us? Well, in church, uh, they gave uh, they talked about Jesus and he died for our sins, yeah. and uh, and of course they gave an altar call if anybody wanted to accept him as their savior, go forward, and. Uh, I did, did you? and went forward and uh, accepted Jesus. And about, uh, I think it was about a week or two later, that was in 1962. Wow. And they discipled uh, us and uh, my husband went forward. He went forward before I did. <laughs> and uh, Did you I, think he was <laughs> Well, I was upset he didn't wait for me. <laughs> oh, okay, he wanted to do, okay. <laughs> do it together, huh? <laughs> yeah, so the next week I went forward and uh, we both went through discipling and... Well, that's wonderful that you were together on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was... It was. Now, he was never Mormon, is no. that right? No. So how was that with your family? Um, they didn't really... They, they weren't really... that deep into it to really care oh, one okay. way or another. So sometimes so, that does cause problems yes, in does. a family. And, yeah. Yeah. So... Well, that was wonderful that you you both did it, though, at mm -hmm. nearly And we were baptized the together. Were you really? You know, and it, that yeah. was neat. Well, don't you feel a sense of freedom and guilt, uh, free, guilt-free that you just, uh, we never had before? Oh, yes. It's <clears throat> like working, like I say, climbing that ladder <laughs> and never making it. When you know that our righteousness is not our righteousness, yeah. It's Jesus Christ's righteousness and his death that he died. His blood covers us and our, and our works, sins. And our works just don't mean anything. They're filthy rags. Yeah. And, uh, and yet, once we're saved, once we trust in Jesus the way we do, we do good works because mm -hmm. he loved us and we love him and we love our fellow man. And Yep, it's uh, like our old pastor used to say that the works is the caboose. 
and not the not the head. It's the <laughs> end. You do it because of what yeah. Christ did for you. Well, you've had some other fascinating experiences. One is that you took a Bible study with Billy Graham. Yes, I did. Tell us about that. Well, I asked my Sunday school teacher, and I had no idea what the Bible was about. And uh, I mean, we really don't. We carry no. it to church every Sunday. I did for many, many years, yeah. and but I couldn't really tell you yeah. much about it. So, well, what I, when I got saved and after I got baptized, and um, I saw, I used to see him every once in a while on TV, but never understood it. So um, <laughs> I wrote to him. You did. And asked him, uh, you know, I just told him what I'd done. And uh, he sent a letter and, and said, uh, would you like to take lessons? I can't remember just exactly how it was worded or whatever. Yeah. And so I did. And uh, for months. He had a lesson plan or something? Yeah, he, he did. And, and he I guess they do you. that. It's a discipleship. Oh, wow. And uh, so that's how I got discipled. You started learning, him. huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, in 62, 1962. Now, since then, you've also done a lot of other activities or done things that you want to share a, a bit about who you've met and who you've worked with? Well, we've been involved with Saints Alive and uh, Wally Tope. I don't know if you know him. He was, I don't, but I know my pastor does. And He, uh, he was murdered in L.A. during the Watts. I think it was the Watts riot. Oh. I'm not sure. And he was a Christian pastor. He was an evangelist oh, okay. more than anything. Yeah. And he would come here and go to different states and witness for the Lord. And uh, just wonder how many seeds are planted with oh, these. I know it. And but the Lord took him home. Yeah. You, know, you mentioned Granny him. Gear. Granny Gear. She was another one that uh, came out of Mormonism. And. Uh, she was out of Arizona, and uh, she came and stayed with us every once in a while. Oh, she Whenever did. she came through, she came to our place. Yeah. And uh, she's a wonderful little lady. <laughs> but, uh, and you said she used to walk in the parade? Well, she, <laughs> she would go, uh, she was in the parade in Salt Lake one time. The 24th of July yeah. parade? Yeah. And uh, wore her bonnet, and <laughs> she just, uh, her pilgrim bonnet. <laughs> oh, her pioneer? Her pioneer, pioneer, yes. Bonnet. <laughs> and uh, she'd wave and everything, and, and but. Uh, and she anyway, was out she there was, planting seeds she too, was, hopefully. Huh? Yeah. So. Oh, well, that's awesome. And then Ed Decker, you said you met him. And we knew him. We went to conferences uh, down in Salt Lake. Well, I guess it was up at a. Can you remember where it was at? But it was in Utah. Yeah. And they had a conference, and uh, Walter Martin was there. Um, yeah, I've heard Ed of Decker and a whole bunch of them were there. That was really neat. And you met Sandra and Gerald Tanner? We had in Utah. We met yeah. them. Well, I guess I'm kind of name dropping here, but it's fascinating to me because I don't know, mo I mean, I know mm -hmm. of them, but and, and some of them yeah. have passed, of course, but. Uh, this is many years ago. But this is a brave time for f back in the 60s and 70s to be uh, mm -hmm. talking against Mormonism, I guess, and show, at least trying to share the good news with people. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you were doing some good work <laughs> in, well, in you know, sharing you, a story? It's something that is in your heart. And once you accept Jesus, you just... It almost bursts out of you because it's it's so new and it's so awesome. It really is. That your it? sins are forgiven. Yeah. So. And you want to uh, share that good news with others. Right. And and they I don't know why, I mean I still have family and I don't know if you still have we family. Do. You yeah. do. Yeah. And do they talk to you or are they? Uh, they're away from us. Oh. But, uh, we don't talk to them yeah. that often. We have some difficult situations. Yeah. You know. It can Just, be. It can be and. It, you know, you raise your children and as Mormons, and then you find out it's not true. <laughs> it becomes a, a problem, and and how to share it with them. You know, they don't really want to. They don't really want to know much. No, it it's too hard to admit it. Yeah, I guess so. And especially with family. Yeah. You know, that's your heritage. That's your grandparents. That's your. Yeah. You know, so you don't want to. <laughs> um, I had a. My grandmother was married to 
man that wanted uh, the girls as as his wives, our, my sisters and that. As a polygamist? He was a polygamist. Oh. He wanted to be. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> thank happen, heavens or? it didn't happen. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Did you say you had another scripture, though, that you wanted to share before we... Yeah. Um, this one here, first, you know, I did say that I think that the best thing for a Mormon, if they want to get out of it, to read John, to read Romans. Romans is so awesome. It really is. Because it talks so much about works and so much how we... And we're sinners. <laughs> yeah, and, and this, uh, Seven Steps... I had got this so many, the Roman road. Oh, I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah, and uh, anyway, but this one, I just wanted to, every time I read this, I think of Mormons because I love the Mormon people, and so does God. Well, that's why we're doing this, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you, you're not doing this, obviously not being paid, <laughs> but no. I mean, we do it because we love these people, and we yeah. just, we know that they don't have the full gospel or the gospel. Yeah. You know, they and have they, a Mormon man-made or man-created. Well, they have a heart for God, but they don't yes. really know God. They draw near to me with their lips, but their yes. hearts are far from me. Yes. And that's sort of what this oh, is. Oh, okay. Didn't mean is, to steal your oh, thunder no, no. there. But. This is Romans 10, and I'm going to put LDS okay. where God, where <laughs> Paul has put Israel. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the LDS people is that they may be saved. For I bear witness, they're always bearing their yeah, testimony yeah, and oh yeah, witness, that's... that they have a zeal for God, which they do, but, God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law or works for righteousness to everyone who believes. And I read that. It's so appropriate. Yes. Yeah. And uh, that's, <laughs> they need to read that. Yeah. Romans 10. <laughs> yeah, read Romans. That's just such, a, after you've yeah. read John, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then Galatians 1. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, about the angel, and about even if an angels. angel yeah. preaches another gospel. So. Yeah, I've just been really impressed with what I've learned about the Bible in just this few couple of years that I've been out. It's, it's amazing. Can't get enough of it. I know. Yeah. I know. Well, Georgie, anything else that you want to share with, uh, with our audience? Is, uh, or it's just that... Uh, anything I, you want to say to your family or friends? Just or? that uh, I hope and pray that... Uh, people will realize the importance of looking into God's Word and accepting Jesus as their Savior. Yeah. It's the most important thing they could do in their life. Yeah. And I well, pray I'm, for them. And, I'm really proud of you for being able to do this when it uh, really was a tough time. I think right now with the internet and everything that's going on that people are leaving the church because they're seeing some of the problems with it. I think the internet again is identified problems in the book of Abraham and mm -hmm. the, the stuff with Joseph Smith and some mm -hmm. of those things. And for you, you're kind of a pioneer in that way to, to have done it so early on. And, and, um, I, and, it, and you've taught, have you now? Uh, have you shared this with some of your family? Or? Well, yes, we have shared uh, the gospel with many of our family members and yeah. uh, my sister was a Mormon and I shared with her she came out of Mormonism oh. accepted the Lord before she died and Fantastic. you know it's just uh, in just visiting with family and yeah. talking plant and, seeds where we can yeah, huh? and some of them accept it some of them don't want to so yeah. you just do what the Lord <laughs> tells you to do <laughs> well you're a delight and thank you oh. so much for sharing well, any last minute thoughts we got just a second I just, but... uh, that's that's it. I that's just it. thank the Lord that that I'm saved and yeah. and because if I was working, I would be a failure. And because of Jesus Christ, I'm not. We can't work hard enough, can we? No. Yeah. No. And another thing uh, is First John one nine. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. 
So anyway. Great message. And, and it gives us such freedom, such hope, such confidence freedom. that it when is. we do pass, that we'll be in God's presence because yeah. he's promised. He yeah. that believeth in me hath everlasting life. Right. What a great message. That, that is his message through the Bible that yeah. uh, he gives us freely yeah. by yeah. his grace, eternal life. Well, thanks, Georgie. Grace upon grace. <laughs> yep. We well, appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.